and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Every hour of every day, lives are saved through the power of organ donation. An organ donor can help save eight lives as well as help many others through tissue donation. Today we're going to meet Vermonters who know the power of organ donation. Jim Carter is part of the Vermont Volunteers for Organ Donation and he leads a donation education program in Vermont high school driver education classes. And alongside Jim is Laura Allen. Laura is an organ donor recipient who received a new heart in October of 2008. Thank you so much for being with us. Jim, share with us your interest in organ donation. Well, I was a, <coughs> excuse me, I was a long time public school teacher and uh, I've always talked about in my soul studies class about organ donation, but what really impacted me was uh, when our daughter, Andrea, as a senior at Mount Mansfield High School, uh, was, was involved in a car crash and uh, was uh, in a coma for six days at the Fletcher Allen University of Vermont Medical Center now and uh, became an organ donor. Um, and so um, after I retired as a public school teacher for 30, after 30 years, I decided to go around to schools talking about the importance of wearing a seatbelt. Andrea did not have a seatbelt on. And um, this is Andrea here, and um, she became an organ donor. Uh, she donated her corneas, her, her heart, uh, both her kidneys and her liver. And um, so myself and a woman named Melissa Jewett was a kidney recipient, decided to do some outreach and we decided to go to high schools and drive, primarily, primarily driver ed classes because it was on your license, uh, to how you felt about being an organ donor. Mm -hmm. So I've done that now for the last 15 years and I never get tired of doing this. I go all over the state, I've been to every county, uh, except Essex County, I have not done a presentation over Essex County. But the other 13 counties I've made presentations to. And Laura, how did the gift of life impact you? Oh, I'd be dead. So it, I, uh, my heart was attacked by a virus in 2003, and I went through uh, all kinds of operations, and I ended up with an artificial heart pump for a period of time, and then I received a donation in October. So it, it's totally changed my focus and my vision for my life. I think up till then I was happy and life was good, but now I feel far more focused and um, intense about things that I need to do. I feel like I have a mission, that I'm here for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I don't really know what that is yet, and I hope that someday I'll find out what it is. But I also, also I have a very strong sense of time and how important time is and how important relationships are. So my family, my friends, my job, everything is just much more intense mm -hmm. and more important. Do you know anything <coughs> about your donor? I do not. I know that it was a woman in her early 30s. And so Jim, what is the process of becoming a donor? Well, the most, <coughs> excuse me, the most important thing is to talk to your loved ones about how you feel about that. Have that discussion. When I do these presentations, to drive, primarily driver ed classes and some health classes around Vermont, even go over to New York, um, is, is to have that discussion. We're not trying to sell the idea of organ donation, but we had that. We did not have that discussion with with Andrea. Our family did not. We have three other children. Um, so the process is is that the first process is to tell you tell your loved ones how you feel about it. How do you feel about being an organ donor? And then through the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles, you can sign up to be an organ donor. Um, I'll, I have a couple of props here I'll show. Um, <clears throat> this was um, uh, well, a previous uh, license, and on the back, a lot, a lot of people say, oh, I signed, my, I signed my license. Right, to become an organ donor. Right. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I signed it, and there's four options there, one to be a donor, not to be a donor. You can mm -hmm. actually specify what you wanted to donate. This is not a first-person consent. Uh, it was just what you wanted to have happen. And what does that mean by first person consent? Why is that important? Well, the first person consent means that you would make that decision. This is just your wishes, the first person consent. Um, the newer licenses are now um, uh, by first person consent. You can see this person, Melissa. She has a, a heart <clears throat> on her license, and that shows that she has signed up when she got her license. Uh, she wishes to be, it's still at the time of possible uh, donation, the organ procurement people, wherever, whatever hospital you're in, would, would absolutely ask your loved ones how you feel. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a first person consent. Um, it, it, it's down, your name is down, Melissa's name is down at the uh, Richmond, Virginia, at the United Network of Organ Sharing, that she is a first person consent. She wishes to be an organ donor. Mm -hmm. but the important thing is talk to your loved ones. Right, and then, and then check your license and see if it needs to be updated. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, and uh, you can go online with donatelifevt.org. Uh, that will 
put you on that first person consent also. Uh -huh. And so uh, what are some of the things that you do, Jim, to raise awareness about this issue? Well, we have a group called the Transplant Donor Network. We've met, we started about, uh, I'd say, 13 or 14 years ago with just a group of us. I think there were three of us. There was a person from the hospital. There was three. Uh, there was a kidney, pancreas kidney recipient. There was a kidney recipient. Myself as a donor family member. And we started this group called the Transplant Donor Network. We meet pretty regularly, almost on a monthly basis. Uh, we do uh, a lot of outreach stuff. Uh, we do a lot of support for people. Uh, we do a lot of uh, education. I, I go around. Laura's been with me many, many mm -hmm. times. Um, I've made the presentation over 2,000 times uh, around the state of liver recipients going, people waiting for an organ, just to educate people uh, about, um, about what it means to be an organ donor. It's the gift of life. Mm -hmm. It's the absolute gift of life. I think the group is really unique because it's a whole combination of people. You've got people that are recipients, people that are waiting, people that are donors, um, living donors yeah. as well. Tell me a little bit about that. I mean, are there other myths about donation? Oh, the myth that I encounter the most from students is that, well, number one, that it's gross. I don't know that that's a myth, but that's a well, definite impediment. Well, it's not impediment. something people really want to talk about, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> dying, uh, having a loved one die. I mean, the worst possible yeah. case for you, Jim. Yeah, <clears throat> having another body part inside of you, yeah. that comes up. The other myth is that doctors would declare you brain dead before you might be, that there might still be hope that you would live uh, just so they can use your organs for somebody else. That there would be that kind of pressure involved, mm -hmm. which is so untrue. Now, you mentioned uh, a living donor. What is that? So a living donor would be somebody who would donate a kidney to someone or part of their liver. Mm -hmm. I think that's it, right? Yeah, that you can donate. Main options, yeah. And we have several people in the group that have been living donors. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so are the tr what transplants can be done at the um, University of Vermont Medical Center? It's just uh, the kidney and, and uh, pancreas, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, one more thing I'd like to add about what's, uh, what the DMV has done, which is good. This is, uh, when I talk to students, this is your permit. Mm -hmm. uh, in the state of Vermont, to get your license, you have to go through. Well, you don't have to take driver ed, but you can't get your license until you're 18. Right. Uh, but uh, now that it's on your permit. Uh, you lift that up a little higher, maybe. Okay. Yeah. There, there, you, there you can see it. There's the donor heart. Yeah. And there's a heart here that this person has decided that they wish to be a donor. Your parents have to be there to approve of that and agree to that. So. Mm -hmm. And when, where can people find out more information about being a donor? Well, you can go to uh, donatelifevt.org. Uh, there's a lot of information there, and you also can sign up there. Um, there's a lot of a lot of information on there. Um, you could uh, it goes our to, Facebook page. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have a Facebook page. <laughs> we've gone uh, we've gone pretty high tech. Um, <laughs> One thing, uh, as far as awareness and whatnot, the last four years at the, the Burlington Marathon, we've had a team, mm -hmm. and I'd like to show you our shirt. Okay. All right, mm -hmm. this is our shirt. Um, and we had um, a person that was a bilateral corneal recipient, a person that was a, a, a person waiting for a liver transplant. Uh, Dr. Harry Chen was a member of our team. Mm -hmm. um, a person that, um, uh, the organ procurement coordinator uh, at the hospital, uh, and then our name of our team for the last four years has been this. <laughs> spare um, parts. Because it's spare parts. You know, it, it, I have a bumper sticker That's on my sure. truck that says, uh, "Don't, don't take, uh, you can't take your he organs to heaven. We need them here." Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's my philosophy. But it's a personal. It's a very personal decision. Mm. Now you mentioned that you hadn't had that conversation, Jim, with your daughter. We had not. Um, how did you come to that decision? To donate because I would imagine that's just the, the most horrible moment in a parent's life. It was. And um, to have to think about that must mm -hmm. have been very, very difficult. Well, the people at Fletcher Allen back then, it was a number of years ago, uh, they, were, they were just remarkably compassionate, understanding, caring, the social workers. Uh, she was in intensive care for six days with a very, very serious head injury. And they were just wonderful about it. They didn't, it was a fellow named Pat Burrs, he was the organ procurement coordinator at the time. And, he, uh, you know, we talked about what could be donated, and she, like I say, she donated her coronaries, her kidneys, her heart, and her liver for six people. Mm -hmm. And uh, two people became sighted, and four people, their lives were saved. So they were, they, they was, it was a very difficult decision, but it was six days. We had some time to think about it, I guess you might say. Mm -hmm. We had three other children. They were, they were involved in the decision, and uh, but it was... Somebody, a student the other day at South Burlington High School said, was that, a, was that a tough decision? And it was an incredibly tough decision because we knew we wouldn't see Andrea again. Right. 
but at the same time, we, we realized what it could do for for, for six other people. Mm -hmm. And so, have you had any contact with Andrew's recipients? It's a very emotional thing, uh, apparently. The people mm -hmm. that are recipients, uh, and we have not. We've written a couple letters that goes through a clearing house, and mm -hmm. that comes. Uh, but we have not. Uh, it's one of the empty parts because we'd like to have talked mm -hmm. about Andrea. Why? Why do you think that that's important? And why is it important for you? Well, you I feel a, a hole in my life not knowing my donor and not knowing her family and not knowing anything about her. And I've had such a sense of presence having had the, the heart with me. So I, I really feel this loss. And in a sense, Jim is kind of like my surrogate <laughs> donor family. And being part of that group really filled quite a need. It's interesting how everyone responds to this because I'm good friends with two other heart recipients mm -hmm. and they have completely different viewpoints on this. So I love the way that they've set this up that there's no contact between the donor f family and the recipient family unless both sides agree. Mm -hmm. And it's only what they're both comfortable with. I've, I've been to a couple of, I've, been, uh, I've joined a couple of recipients that have met their donor families mm. and it's one of the most emotional things and really joyful things I've ever been part of. Really? Uh, it was just incredible. It was, uh, we went, uh, a liver recipient friend of mine in Shelburne, uh, we, my wife and I went with he and his wife and met the donor family down in Connecticut mm. and it was, uh, I got goosebumps even talking about it and it happened uh, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. It was uh, just a remarkable, joyful thing. But it's a very personal thing for the recipients to meet uh, because they, they, they're alive because of a gift of, some, of someone else made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's such Is a there gift. Guilt? Do you feel a little guilty? Yes, I was yeah. just, that's what I was just going to say. It's such an enormous gift. You feel guilty because of that because you don't feel you deserved it. Plus, you know you're walking around because someone else is dead. So it's like a survivor guilt kind of thing. So mm -hmm. everybody responds very differently to that. Our, our group is trying very hard to uh, have a registry for living donors mm -hmm. because you can live with one kidney. We know many, many people, I'm sure mm -hmm. Laura, we know many people have mm -hmm. just one kidney. You mm -hmm. don't need two kidneys. So we're hoping that we can set up uh, a living donor registry. Is um, it just educating people about the issue and, and letting them know that, you know, you can give this amazing gift to somebody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a truly amazing gift. People. Well, if you're on dialysis, which we know many, many people on dialysis, it's every other day for the rest of your life. You're never going to get off dialysis uh, unless you die, unfortunately, or you, a, you get a transplant. There's about uh, over 100,000 people in the United States waiting, and 18 people die every day. And mostly for day. kidneys. Yeah. Mostly yeah. for kidneys. Yeah. Kidneys are the worst. Yeah. And so oh. tell me a little bit about some of your efforts that you've done and how things have changed when it comes to organ donation here as far as the number of people who have signed up. Oh, well, uh, we went from 258 uh, last January uh, through the DMV who got their, they got their computer system up and running. We were the only state yes, in the country. finally. Yeah, oh. we were the only state in the country that did not have a DMV computer system that was up and running. And we have now are over 172,000 Vermonters have signed up to be organ donors. That's incredible. Yeah, and, and if you now, if you go into the, there's nine places around the state where you can get your license. Um, we have uh, a really nice picture of a, a person says, have, uh, it says, have, do you have a heart? And uh, <laughs> just, again, we're not trying to push people. It's a very personal decision. Mm -hmm. but we'd really like to have people talk to their loved ones about it. I do a survey with, after I do a presentation to the students in drive red classes, I do a survey, the drive red teacher the next day does a six question survey. Mm -hmm. And almost every student, one of the questions is, did you talk to a family member about Jim Carter's presentation or if Laura's with mm -hmm. me? And if they say oh, yes, goodness. almost always they'll say they wish to be an organ donor. And, and again, I'm not pressing people to do it, but they mm -hmm. hear Laura's story, or they hear somebody that was a living donor, or somebody that was a liver recipient come with me, and it's just, it's powerful. It's a powerful gift. Is it just that people don't e even really think about it? It's not kind of on their radar screen? I think that's part of it, and when we presented in the park, at Battery Park and Heritage Ford supported that mm -hmm. and we were there presenting and, and I've, people would walk by our table and one person said to me, oh well that's kind of like tempting fate. If I sign up then I'm going to die. <laughs> you know, there's all these kind of myths out well, there. Well if you don't sign up you're going to die anyway. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> it's so, it's so funny. And you can't take it with you. Yeah, right. it's so funny. Yeah. Now if people are interested in finding out more about this, what should they do? 
Well, I think to go to Donate Life uh, uh, VT would be one thing. They certainly mm -hmm. can call me uh, or, or, or go to the Facebook. Yeah. Facebook, yeah. I think. Yeah. Why don't you explain how the Facebook works? Well, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> That's Sally. I don't either. <laughs> Sally does the Facebook. Yeah. She's our, a recent kidney recipient. She waited a long, long time yeah. for kidney and finally got one. And she's kind of yeah. taken on the media part of it. Yeah. One quick question. Are you ever too old to be a donor? Well, you can donate when you're born. If you weigh eight pounds, you can donate heart valves. And then actually a 94-year-old man, the liver is probably the most resilient uh, mm -hmm. organ. And a 94-year-old man uh, donated a liver, uh, and it's a very successful transplant. They oh, used to cut off um, heart transplants at age 60. You couldn't receive a heart, but mm -hmm. now they've extended that because they'll take older donors. Good. And then yeah. that tends to work far better. Well, I want to thank you both for joining me and talking about this really important topic. Thank you. Thank us. you. Yeah. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.